Hi, my name is Luis Martinez, and today I'll be presenting my capstone project. My capstone project is on how to build a house. I have four years of trade learning experience. I studied with Mr. Encarnacion for two years. I was mentored by Mr. Ben Ocknor my junior year, and I was mentored by Mr. Galliano my final year. I have a pretty good understanding of architectural building codes and regulations needed to provide the overall well-being and safety of a person. I also have the ability to work with architectural tools, know how to use them properly, and know how to use programs such as Revit, AutoCAD, Home Design, and many more. Some of my personal skills include how to scale objects to their accurate size, whether they're architectural measurements or engineering measurements. And I also have a keen eye to small attention. I have a good attention to detail. So if something is wrong or something is not the right size, I'll easily identify it and quickly fix it. So now that we are done with my skills, let's get started. Really, there are infinite possibilities into building a house. You know, it depends on what a person likes and how much art is incorporated into the house. But really, if for a residential house, you're gonna have to do your research. How much money are you willing to spend? Typically, the nicer the house is, the more money you're gonna end up spending. So you need to set a budget. Sending a budget is important because it puts, it allows you to buy things within your range that will build your house of your dreams. So what you have to do first is you need to hire a contractor. And now what the contractor is going to do is he's going to work with you to possibly give you ideas or incorporate your ideas into the floor plans to make your dream house. So once you've got, you've worked with your contractor and you know what you want and he gives you okay, you're going to have to ask the city for permission. And what the city is going to tell you is where is it going to be built? That brings us to my next slide, our location. Where is it going to be built? The city is going to give you a zoning map and they're going to tell you, oh, for example, they could say this red right here is mountains or hills and this green right here is flatland. So this is important because depending on where the house is built, the building codes changes. For example, you're not going to build a T foundation on a hill because the house will probably fall. There's special foundations for for um, houses being built on hills. So that was just a basic example. Once you have all your permissions and you know the building codes, you know where it's gonna be built, you know how to build it, now you can finally get started. So we're gonna start with our foundation. The foundation acts as the base, as the footwork of the entire house. And the uh, foundation is one of the most important core fundamentals of a house. So what you're gonna have to do to build one is you're gonna have to clear the grade or the land of all obstacles so that you can easily dig and build your foundation. There are also different types of foundations such as slab on grade, crawl space, and there are also T foundations. Typically for a residential house, T foundations are used. And T foundations are typically about 42 inches below the ground just above the frost line and this is important because you don't want any water or moisture or ice breaking your foundation if your foundation breaks your house could potentially collapse and in order to protect your foundation once you pour the cement in you're going to want to put rebar in and what the rebar, rebar does is it strengthens your foundation but there's more you're going to also want to waterproof and damp proof your foundation this, what these things do is that they act as a layer of protection against water and moisture and that prevents it from creating bigger cracks in your foundation. So once you've built the walls of your foundation, you're gonna have to put the floor, also known as a slab. And what the slab does is not only does it act as a floor, but it also acts as protection to you and your family. What it does is it keeps out radon out of your house and radon is a cancer causing gas and that's below the ground and it can rise up so what the slab does is it prevents it from doing that so once you've got your footwork your base of your house you're going to want to go into your framing there are also many different types of framing 
there's balloon framing, there's post and beam. Post and beam is used for more commercial buildings, like halls, I guess you could say. And there's also platform framing, and platform framing is the most typical, most commonly used type of framing. It's what you see in the picture right here. What platform framing basically is, is once you build your foundation, you put your girders and you put your rim joists, you put your floor, right? You put your sub floor and your finished floor. And once you've done that, then you start putting up your walls. And the way platform framing works is the walls are already built. As you can see, they're just standing it up. And this is important because the, all the walls, all the, all the doors, all the windows, they're already set in place. And all you have to do is stand it up and nail it down into the floor. And you do this all around the house, all around the perimeter or outline of the house. And once you do that, you repeat the process. On the second floor, if there's a second floor, you would put your beams, you would put your girders, everything to make another floor. Once you do that, again, you lift up the walls, you set them in place, and you nail them down. So that's basically it. It's pretty easy. The process is repeated again if there's a third floor. Then you're gonna go on to your roof framing. So roof framing is also pretty important, although you might think it's not. There's different types of uh, roofs also. There's gable roofs, there's hip roofs, there's shed roofs. It all depends on what kind of house you're building. But the basically the purpose of a roof is to keep water and air and it controls the temperature in your house. So the most commonly used in a house are gable roofs and the reason for this is because the pitch is just like this and all rain and all water and all air it just slides off and it goes into the the pipes on the side and then it just it doesn't go into your house so once you've built your roof you got your your bird stops your fascia boards you got your rafters once you've got all that you're going to want to put your insulation because as i said the higher you are, the stronger the wind is, and you don't want all that wind getting into your house. So insulation is very important. You might not have known this, but there's also vents in your roof. And what these vents do is that they take gas that might, toxic gas that might be in your pipes, and they bring them out into the air so that they're not trapped in your house or could possibly harm you. If there's a chimney also that could also act as a a vent that brings out the smoke from your house into the air so roofs are really important because they are the they're the head of your house they they're like the brain i guess you could say because they prevent any water from getting into your house they they protect your house quite substantially on to your next protection um this is called the house wrap the green if you've ever driven around your neighborhood and you've seen this like paper around the house and never wonder what it is that's called house wrap now what the house wrap does is that once you have your framing done I'm sorry once you have your framing done the house the house wrap acts as a basic protection or layer of surf layer of protection that protects your house while people are working inside so this is this is like the skin i guess you could say um it prevents air from going into your house it prevents from debris getting into your house it prevents it from air moving joists or anything so it protects your house basically and during this stage is typically when windows and doors are installed or the glass is installed and then people can finally start working inside installments so now that you have your house wrap on you have all your windows and doors placed you have your roof you can finally start working on the inside of a house and so what you do here is like your plumbers electricians they'll come in and start putting their wires and their pipes and this is important they do that first because if you put the insulation first you'll have no space or no room to put the pipes in and even if you do it will be hard and complicated so it's really important that you do the wires and the plumbing first because it just makes it easier for everyone. During this stage, also all the sinks, all the toilets, all the faucets, all the electrical sockets are also placed. Once you finally do that, you can put your insulation between all the pipes and wires and, and 
studs. And this is important. The insulation is also really important because it controls the, the flow of temperature in your house. You know, if it's raining outside or if it's really cold, it's not going to let all the air inside your house. It keeps your house at a desirable temperature that you like. That's also when the drywall is placed and basically that's, you're practically done. Home sweet home. This is just a quick recap of what you guys learned today. After a few months, because building a house is not fast, it takes some time, your house is finally done. But these are the core fundamentals in building a house. You're gonna need your floor plan. What are you building? How is your house gonna look like? That's your floor plan, that's the design. You gotta know what you're building. Then is your foundation. As I said before, the foundation acts as the base, the footwork of the entire house. Without the foundation, your house could possibly collapse. And then you go into your wall framing. You put in your subfloor, your finished floor, your girders, you put everything so that you can walk on top. And once you do that, you put your walls up. Your walls up are, are up and all the windows and doors are already in place and you just nail them down and you repeat the process for the following floors. Once you do that, you wanna go ahead and put your roof. Like I said, your roof is really important because it controls the not only does it keep the rain out of your house, but it also controls the airflow into your own house. It keeps your house warm or it keeps your house cold, depending on how you might like it. The vents also take out toxic gas that could be lurking in your pipes. Once you do that, you wanna put your insulation. Your insulation is also very, very important because it prevents hot or cold air from going into your house or out of your house. This is important because if it's a really hot day and you have an air-conditioned room, you don't want all the cold air to go outside. So insulation is very important. Then you finally have your finished exteriors and interiors. And this is what I was talking about when they put their pipes in, their, their electrical wires in, their faucets, their sinks. You know, they, that's, that's it. You, you, once you have all those things done, you're basically done. You can paint the house whatever color you want. You can furnish it however you like, but your house is done. So, thank you. I'd like to give special thanks to my shop instructors for providing me with all the knowledge and experience they've had in these four years. Uh, <laughs> I'd also like to say thanks to my mom for always supporting me. But most importantly, I'd like to thank all my peers and all my friends and comrades that I've made and I've had throughout high school that have made shop and architecture a fun yet good experience. Whenever I needed help, they were always there for me. So, thank you. And thank you for all your patience and all your kind kindness. I was supposed to put a picture here of all of us, but I couldn't seem to find it or I couldn't, it wasn't letting me put it in there. But this is where you guys were supposed to be. Thank you.